Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be covering another build order video here. This time I'm going to be covering it Pavium. So this isn't going to be the typical build orders for beginners that we've done in the past. It's actually going to be more of an advanced guide because we managed to get a pretty good video um, from playing this uh, new up and coming player called Stars. I believe he's a French player already in champ, uh, taking some big names. So it's going to be a good game and a good way to demonstrate uh, the capabilities of Pavium and what you should do with the leader. Um, so to start, we, we're not just going to have a five minute video like we did for the other beginners build orders. We're going to go all the way through the game uh, and comment on each step of the game. Obviously, as you know, games can change. So there isn't just one set build you can do. You have to always be adapting in a game. Uh, even your leader power order adapts your economy, what units you build and what upgrades you get at certain points of the game. So hopefully we can try and demonstrate that here. So we haven't done a, a commentary video uh, for probably a few weeks now because uh, my video editing software did seem to die uh, but now we managed to get a new one up and running we're going to start doing these and remember you can catch all these games live on twitch which will be linked in the description below so we're going to be going down on the first game on rift we're going to be playing a cutter cutter is very strong at the moment probably one of the top five leaders with the recent buffs he got um and pavium is a bit lower on the pecking order um, probably like the 12th to 14th, uh, so it's, it is going to be a struggle of a match. So first thing you want to do with Perium, which is really a pretty standard opener, especially against UNSC, it works pretty well on other maps. Not so much Rift because it's so spread out with all the ledges and the hills and things like that. But you open Triple Harvester, uh, you burn out your first two pads and you try and get out as many choppers as possible. So that's generally what you do uh, in a normal pavement build order. In this matchup, um, I think we get two choppers out to begin with. We don't go for the free chopper because we don't want to delay that third pad. Because it's rift, we can get into tech two quite comfortably. And that's where we're going to start getting a lot stronger because we can get those counter units out. So you'll see here, we put our third pad down. We burn out, we send the chopper for a mini steal. The reason we go for a mini steal, we're banished, particularly against UNSC, is because flamers find it so hard to take the building back, especially when you're building choppers as well, uh, to help defend that mini base. And it just delays a lot of time. And we need to get into tech two to be strong against Cutter. Cutter's really strong on tech one. We're very weak on tech one, so we need to avoid that period altogether. And we try to go for a mini steal. Unfortunately, we don't get it, um, which isn't ideal, because we did want to bring blue's focus to that mini base so his focus wasn't on the map control with the power nodes and the map and harassing our main base so you probably remember a while back ben now uh got a nerf um believe to burnout free burnout free is now the radius of burnout two um so your, your base building is quite difficult to do uh with pavium at the moment uh, because ideally in the early game, you want your gens and your supply pads upgraded to be burnt out. So that's the position we've got them in now with burnout 2. And then burnout 3 would allow you to get the new pads that come up with the tech 2 base. But now you can't hit all your pads on one base. You can only hit a maximum of 5 pads, which are the back pads. So unless you recycle your gens or place a gen on the back, in the mid game to the late game, you won't be able to hit those, uh, those generators there. So play style with Pavium early on, you just want to get choppers out, try and harass as many marines or grunts as possible as you can, kill as many as you can to try and set them back. Of course we're going into a tech 2 so we're going to turret up, turret up here. And that's before we've even scouted really, uh, just because all cutter players generally will play a heavy tech 1 and you don't want to be surprised. like. People can gank around the sides uh, without you seeing. We've not got a lot of map vision early on on the map here, so we're just going to keep harassing. Keeping our opponent busy, make him micro, and uh, try and make some mistakes. Delay his attack on our base until we're ready. So we go ban out two second point. <coughs> going to help us get into tech 2 faster and as you're queuing up tech 2 what you really want to do is try and take your expo um, if there's a lot of map pressure from the opponent you can't really do that uh, but yeah you want to try and take your expo as quickly as possible uh, as you get in tech 2 
A neat trick you can do with Pavium is if you manage to build your leader on an expert, you can lock him in the base and he will actually heal the base from inside and he becomes untargetable uh, from the enemy. So that is a good way of defending your base if you don't have enough units there to defend it. And then you can just sit rangers at the back of the base uh, attacking the units that are pushing. So you'll see here. We're, we're queuing up tech 2 and we're off for our base, so this is the perfect timing you want to get it. There's not a lot of map pressure from the opponent, we want to get it up as quickly as possible. Let's jump in the garrison there so that marine don't get it. And he didn't actually manage to get the scout on the base there, uh, he was too far away, so there won't be much urgency to push that. Uh, so we should be able to get it up. Obviously there is a Spartan here, that Spartan can wipe all these choppers with a good slam, so we have to be careful we got back off. Now we're in tech 2, going to get the raid camps up, going to start building rangers to help defend this expo. And we're playing very much a defensive play style with Pavium. Uh, essentially what you want to play for is the Lich push. So on 5th point you get the Lich, it's very cheap, about 600-600. Last I believe, it's about 120 seconds, 90 to 120 seconds. All the information on leader powers is in the Halo Wars 2 multiplayer guide, which I'll also link in the description. Uh, there's a lot of builds for every leader in there. All the videos are linked in there in case you can't find them on the YouTube channel. And as expected in this map, uh, in this matchup, Kurt's going to get all the power nodes. He takes power nodes a lot faster, he can run a lot faster. Uh, so he's probably going to have all four power nodes. We're going to take one here. We're going to try and take, retake some map control, try and push back. So we don't want to get too far behind. Power nodes do give 1.5 power per second. We see the opponent's got no detect, so we go for Ultramines, and we're going to drop them to help defend the Expo, because his army was lurking there. And again, we're still not ready to defend. If he does push with an ODST drop, we're going to be in a, a, a lot of trouble. So we're just trying to bait him into the mines here. Uh, normally, you would go rain of fire on the third point, um, Combo that with the Y ability um, from your leader. So there you go, he walks into the mines, loses a lot of marines, a lot of red bars, so he's going to back off. We're going to try and uh, pick some off with choppers here. See the Spartan comes in, those choppers are going to die. Just try and make sure you are on point with your burnout as well, that's going to keep your eco up. Opponent looks like he forgot about the mines. Spartan walks into two mines, gets weak, loses his shield, so that's going to be an easy pick for us. One range is going to go away. Bad jump for him because our leader is actually there to finish off uh, the Spartan there. So. Really good engagement from us. Still playing defensively. Now the opponent has all five power nodes. We need to retake those back at some point. But luckily we have Burn out. Uh, it does give us a, a juicy power income. And now the push is over. We're going to immediately swap to a third generator. Because we can do. We got a bit of downtime now. He lost a lot of units. He lost his Spartan. Uh, most players, if, the, if that happens to them, they won't be pushing for the next two or three minutes. Uh, at least. So you have chance to pull your eco back, get some units out. Uh, so the third gen will just help us. So now we're in the ideal path situation, or at least pre-nerf we are. Um, normally pre-nerf you'd have a full eco base like we have now, and then full production on your secondary base. So to protect that eco, we're going to actually put a shield down, uh, gen down there. And you'll see a massive push coming in. We're completely out of position. Uh, this should really hurt us. Uh, so now we are panicking a bit in the map. Uh, we've got shield gen at the front. We immediately cancel that because it's too expensive. He's going to focus the gen, so we put the ultramines near the gen, steal the garrison, and we're just going to try and get back and limit as much damage as we can. Obviously, the ODST mines are going down. We're still at 30 population. Uh, we should probably have more at this point. But the opponent, luckily for us, backs off, and he runs straight into our leader uh, with the rangers there as, as well. Loses a lot of units. I think he sees the ultramines, and he doesn't want to push it. So we, we did our job. We didn't actually lose any pads. Um, and now we're in a really healthy position. He keeps pushing, he keeps losing units. Obviously, he does have drops to repot, but it's all going to affect him uh, economy-wise. And it's this garrison we actually wanted. I actually thought he was going to do uh, a sneaky push like that, which is why I sent that grunt over there, and we did scout it. Managed to scout an expo here as well, which we don't want him to get. We want to pick that off, but he's losing a lot of units to these rangers. So we just wanted a bit more power there, so we actually focused our three generators with the burnout. Yeah, rather than the two supply pads, two generators. 
And we're going to go Rain of Fire to combo that with our leader. Don't have a lot of base damage here, but this expert's pretty weak. We're going to kill it anyway. Uh, and in terms of base damage, we're going to pull in a few Locusts. Now, what you can do with Locusts on this map, because their expert is right below that cliff uh, on the left, which you'll probably will show you later. You'll probably see the Locusts go up there. Uh, if they don't have a Watchtower, it's a really good vantage point to get some free pads. It's really difficult for a UNSC player to get up there. Uh, he'll only have a Spartan Slam. He won't have Teleport or Pelican Transport because uh, he is Cutter. So. Our expert has been upgraded. He can see that we're out of position. So we're going to all units back to our expert because we can see his army just sat there in the distance. And we're just going to leave one Locus on this base with a Marauder to kill it. Remember, you don't need to have your whole army actually killing an expo over here. That's when you get caught out of position. Like, he had his whole army to the right that we saw with the spa, and he was ready to push our expo. We had to do something to get back. He's now backed off, um, so we're going to put shield gen on our expo, and we're going to make a small push-up, see what he's got. See some Kodiaks coming out on the right, but we're pushing on the left. This point in the game, I am really not ready for Kodiaks at all. Shield gen's coming up. We got no shrouds, got no hunters, um, so this could be a pretty difficult spot for us. So we're going to bluff it a bit. So as I mentioned, Locus is going to go up on that ledge. Something could see me because it is hitting the shield of the Locus off, but I'm not quite sure what because uh, it actually stops targeting the Locus in the end. Rangers pushing up just to deal with the infantry, trying to avoid that Kodiak. They do a lot of AoE damage, so we're just going to try and split. Ultramans go down uh, on the Kodiak there. And our leader's in the garrison. Leader's in the garrison like a hunter captain, a pavium, leader with range who's tanky, are really difficult to deal with. So he actually chooses to ODST drop uh, our Locus on the top, so they are going to die. There's nothing we can do about that. We've got a Locus on the bottom here, and there's a... A Vet 2 Cyclops on it. So we're going to lose all our Locusts. That's all our base damage got gone. We know the base is really weak, so we got to try and end it before we push out. Otherwise, it's just going to be wasted eco for nothing. So you'll see the base red bar. We're still here fighting the army. Another Locust luckily manages to escape and come in, do a bit more damage to the base. And when we're ready, we're just going to drop a rain of fire on that, finish it while we can, uh, and then it's time to back off. So another really good push. We did take the engagement well. We we killed the expo. The locusts did the job, even though there was a sacrifice. God bless their souls. Pavium's in the garrison, uh, taking cardiac shots, and there's a Spartan here. We're going to try and deal with. Uh, so we're in a really good position now. We're going to start getting shrouds out to count with the cardiacs. So the cardiacs do a lot of damage to banished, not to just infantry in general. Try and reserve our units here. He actually backs off. He could have killed our leader. Uh, so he actually backs off. So we're going to, even though the leader's slow, we're going to back out of there as quickly as possible. And he's actually going to be pushing our third expo here. Yeah. I think in this situation, we actually just let him have it. Uh, we just got a lich. So as you see, now's the time to push. We can drop a lich on the main base. He's just lost his expo. And right now, we're just trying to spam as many counter units as possible. This was uh, actually a bit of a cocky push. Uh, he's trying to rebuild that base, so we want to deny it as quickly as possible. And we want to get the Lich off, but there's just so many Kodiaks here. Um, luckily, a bit of bad micro means I've actually got a Shroud at his main base on our earlier rally point that was left there uh, for some reason. So we just go drop the Lich on the main. There's no turrets, nothing to defend it, so it's going to do a lot of damage to this base. Now he's panicking, he's trying to come back. All he's got is Kodiaks, he can't really deal with the Lich. And this is the Lich push that we do. So, on bigger maps with Pavian, what you can do when you go straight into Tech, you can mass Marauder. Um, go into Thick Hard Marauder on Tech 3. Uh, that's a really good play. Uh, and then on Tech 3, because you're already in vehicles, you're already probably getting some vehicle upgrades. Wraiths is the way to go. Wraiths are really good. Um, obviously, in the current meta, the reason Wraiths aren't that great is because of vultures. So if you're playing a UNSC late game, they're going vultures, you're going to have a, a really tough time against vultures with riffs. Um, so you're going to have to mix in a lot of reavers, try and take them out, uh, do the best you can, and take free. So this Lich actually almost made the base, which is the perfect scenario for us. He managed to kill the portal, though. 
Um, so because he killed the portal, it meant it was really difficult for the Lich to actually see and finish the base off. So overall, we lost pretty much every single unit. <laughs> Not something I recommend I really want to do, but it worked. It's going to put him on the defensive. He has to eco back up. He's basically on half a base right now. Even on the minimap, you can see three. He's on half a base just because of the pads he's got up. So now look at our eco from that last burnout. Uh, even though we lost all our units, we're just going to go into a Scarab. Pretty rich. He's in a pretty poor spot. He's got a lot of Kodiaks. He's got nothing to do with the Scarab. So moving from the unit comp we just have into a Scarab is going to be really difficult for him to deal with. It's just players like this that can really turn a game. Um, if your opponent's hurt... You can't afford to sit back and delay and go straight into a super unit, Condor, Scarab, whatever. Um, we had excess blue. Don't normally recommend building banshees, um, especially with no upgrades like we have here. But we had excess blue, and we want to keep on that map pressure. So we lost everything. We've got excess blue. Uh, just built a few banshees here to get over to this expo quickly uh, and pick it off, which we managed to do because he actually doesn't come and defend it. Because, like I said earlier, he is hurt on eco. And we scout the fourth base as well. So he's got four bases to our two, but our two bases are a lot more upgraded than his is. So our eco's a lot better with a burnout on top. Uh, we're in a pretty strong spot. Uh, again, playing defensive while the Scarab comes out. We're going to be pulling out some blister backs, which do a lot of damage to infantry. And that's Cutter's main play style infantry. So slowly waiting, probably we're going to be looking at getting some reinforcements upgrade at this point. Obviously the build probably could be a lot cleaner, uh, but this is a, a real time match. Um, everything you think you think you should do, generally you don't end up doing. <laughs> You're more reacting and proacting to what your opponent's doing. There we go, we're going to try and secure our third base now. Hopefully he doesn't push. He's going to be working on getting his third base back up and recouping his main um, when we're going to be going for a game-ending push in a second. So we're taking during Will next. During Will is an extremely strong heal. Um, it lasts so long, so you can just sit at base for pretty much ever. Um out healing anything your opponent can throw at you with the engines as well. Got a couple of shrouds for the Kodiaks that he's got. Now the play we're doing here, we're kind of pushing his attention away from where we're going. So we're sending the Scarab to the right side base and we're sending the Banshees to harass this left mini base. Now I didn't expect his whole army to be sat at that mini base. That is just unusual from any player. Um, I expected it to be sat outside, probably the expo is trying to get up. So the Banshee play on the expo didn't work, but what it did give us was a scout into where his army was. So his army is miles away right now. Um, so we're going to be able to kill this expo before he can even react to this Scarab going over there. Trying to stop it, he drops a Cyclops on it to try and st uh, stun it. Scarab's going to be focusing the base. And all we've got is a Scarab. Might die, but it's going to do its job and get the base. And we have a lot of eco to move into a different army comp. And that's what's good about late games. Always swapping your army comps can throw your opponents off. Look how fast that Scarab melts the base. We're just keeping the opponent on the back foot while we're ahead. We've now got our expo upgraded. And any counter push is going to be stopped by these blister backs as well. And notice how, because we knew where his army was and his whole army was out of position, how quickly we could take the expo and get out. Scav's still full health. We just took a full base off him there. That's going to really hurt him even more. And now we've got the Lich back up. We're going to go for another push, knowing that he's on the back foot hurting. We got this bear now to keep our eco going. Look at the blue. Ready. 
So we don't need to play defensive anymore. We're actually going to bring the blister backs with us. Put them out of reach on that ledge up there, like what we did with the Lurkus earlier. Pavian, once again, we're going to try and get him in that garrison. It's a really good spot on this map uh, to get a leader. No doubt he's got it occupied yet. There we go. He has a, a Vet 2 ODST in there. So the Scarab's just going to ignore the army, really. Uh, we're going to main the base, which is actually still half health. Now, if you're the cutter player here, what you'd normally do is you would uh, smoke the Scarab. Because I've got Detect, you can't smoke the base, but you can smoke the Scarab. So, what's happening here... Um, so, notice how I place my leader powers. So, what happens is... I put Arena of Fire directly on his army with the Y ability from my leader to slow him. I then put the Ultramines behind the army so he can't escape that way. And then if the only way he can escape is by pushing into my current army, which is going to cause him more casualties. So three steps there. Rain of Fire on him with the Y ability is going to do a lot of damage and he has to move. He has to either move into the Ultramines, which will literally wipe his whole army, or he has to move into my army and force a fight, which I'm going to win because I've got the Scarab, the counters, the leader in the garrison. Uh, Scarab does fall, but actually does his job. The base falls. He's down on one base, we're down on three. We're in a, a really good position here, really winnable, and we're going to move into Raves because we've got 4k blue, and Raves are just going to end his life. So in this situation, I feel like the game's pretty much won, so get a bit cocky, steal his expert, try and put my leader in his garrison outside his main base. Little do we know, he's got a pretty decent army up there, uses an ODST drop, probably going to lose our leader, immediately sack that base, uh, get some eco back. And now we're just kind of keeping busy. We're going to retake the nodes. We're going to try and stop him from retaking this base here um, and just wait for the rest of our army to come and end the game. We got that much blue. We're just literally spamming every unit we can. You'll notice we've got some grunts on the map. Uh, we pretty much have all of our offensive leader powers now, so we're going to go into Burnout 3 to help our economy even more. Even though it isn't as great as it once used to be, uh, it's still pretty good. Just move the blister back up here so it can see the base. So if he does try and see the base, the blister back will start hitting it immediately. And we know where his army is again. It's down this right-hand side. We just saw it focusing down a couple of units here. So we know exactly where he is, which means he probably picked up that right-side base uh, just then. And we're just kiting with the Wraiths at the moment. They're expensive, so we don't want to lose any of them. But all he has is Marines, really. Uh, one thing we do neglect to buy here is Reavers to deal with all the Nightingales. There we go. He does have that base. Scouts with a Wraith. You normally don't see that every day. They do cost 550 blue. A Grunt would be much better, but... This late in the game doesn't really matter with how far ahead and how rich we are. Look at the Marines just absolutely melting. There goes the Rain of Fire with the Y ability again on all of the units. You see, we're just going to lose every leader power here to try and end the game. We cut him off again with the Ultramans on the ramp. He's forced to push to the other side. Wraith's putting in a lot of damage. That Spine's going to die. Actually doesn't jack a Wraith. Uh, that base is going to fall as well. And we're probably going to see a resign from the uh, player here. So 
So guys, thanks for watching. Again, if you do want to catch any of these games live, make sure you follow me on Twitch in the link below and turn on that bell button so you get notifications. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe on YouTube and I would recommend checking out the Halo Wars 2 multiplayer guide as well. It's got a lot of good stuff in there and I'm continuously updating it with these videos, uh, hopefully to help you guys get better. Uh, and if you do want to talk to me uh, personally, you can join the Discord. I have my own Discord. I think there's about 160 people in there at the moment, so we're growing that as well. Uh, so that'd be really good to get some of you guys in there. I can give you help, tips, anything you like uh, along with these videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.